Ladies and gentlemen, uh, from browser, from WhatsApp, Alex Pesco, they propose uh, maybe, maybe the mass of the, uh, the scale charm meson is low, is low, is pushed down because of the mixing with uh, two fork, with uh, four fork state. Uh, okay, but uh, it doesn't become, a, uh, it's not appearing anymore because we don't have a Pesco fork charm meson state. Uh, actually, it's just a breakthrough in this field. It's due to two uh, Portuguese, uh, one background and loop. Okay. In 2003, they proposed that uh, uh, we know that the two-quark model doesn't work well. Okay. So, two-quark model doesn't, I mean, doesn't work, at least for the uh, scale meson, scale charm meson. That's why the check scale charm meson is concerned. So, they propose that uh, perhaps uh, the two ports like uh, CS bar or CG bar, they have mixing with uh, nearby uh, couple channels. For example, like a CS bar with a uh, couple with a uh, DK, DK channel, DK threshold, and CQ bar with a uh, couple with uh, B type. Okay. In fact, uh, this proposal, this uh, advocation has been confirmed and has been realized by the QCD sound calculation. The first, uh, there, there are two QCD sound calculation done by Dai Yuanben, uh, Zhu Sidi, okay. Uh, uh, it's a very famous work in the Panda Fork, and uh, he reached the uh, NGU long time ago, okay. So they, they, they include the, uh, like a DK, uh, DK half channel effect in the uh, correlation function, the QCD sound correlation function, okay. And also D type in the uh, for, for the scale, they they, they, they they can calculate the mass of the DS knob and the D knob. Apparently, also it's a good agreement. Well, using air body in good agreement with the random result. Also, the other nice thing is that uh, its conjecture also has been confirmed by the lattice simulations. In fact, there's just a two PIL paper last year, well, one last year, one uh, two years ago. Okay, uh, the calculation is follows. Uh, they introduce uh, not only two quark, but also the meson meson interpolating fields. Okay, so they found out that the model uh, at all. They found out that uh, DS no state below the DK threshold, and likewise for the uh, DS no twenty four hundred above the D type threshold. In fact, uh, all the early lattice calculation without uh, implementing introducing the meson meson interpolating field. Uh, we keep the DS node stuff very substantial about the DK threshold. And in recent years, uh, people of course introduced, uh, we, we use the uh, most uh, sophisticated uh, full QCD or unquenched calculation, but still larger than the, 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 the results still larger than the data. For example, the calculation by curve video is, uh, is uh, much uh, still. But, but uh, King Wei maybe have a Yeah, I just use the two port op interpolator, and then I can get the results, exactly the same as that. Okay, so the near degenerate mass difference, okay, is been produced in my data without using this, this is four box so, avoiding field. So your, your two box field doesn't need to couple with uh, like DK? No, no. Just, only just, just one operator. Okay, okay. that's not enough. Okay. One, just one two box operator and then get the state. Okay. So what's wrong with the fork model? Then I, I, I don't know what's wrong with the fork model because in the beginning, model is a model, okay, it's not a theory. Not uh -huh. a fundamental theory at all, okay. I mean, I don't even ask, okay, why pop model is wrong. It's but, not supposed to be correct. But we, we can look at the other way around. Why, why is that, uh, I can ask a question, why is that the pop model was so well for the shield scale meson, factor meson, blah, 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 except for the scale meson? Yeah, then it's some, something, something we have to understand, okay. Yeah. If we want the understanding, okay. But for the, for the, for the last QCD, okay, there's a first principle calculation. And then from that, okay, we can get the entire spectrum. Okay. okay. But we don't offer explanation. Or yeah, maybe maybe we can offer some explanation if we can uh, work on some uh, calculation. They, yeah. Okay. Some it's good to know. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. Uh, just a, just another different song. It actually is quite similar. It's a due to the there's a paper by uh, Guo 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 Feng. Okay, is uh, he's in Germany. Okay, uh, other people. Okay, 
They also study the scaling amplitude in the so-called unitarized counterperturbation theory. In each approach is similar to what I mentioned before. It's uh, also you can see the, the coupling with uh, uh, the coupling of the the two quark with uh, nearby uh, channels, strong coupling channels. Okay. But anyway, it's uh, very amazing that uh, they they they, uh, they they can figure out the, the bounce state or, or or resonance. Okay. Uh, something to do with uh, the Riemann C thing, the first uh, Riemann C, the second Riemann C. Okay. But anyway, the, the, I, I will not mention that uh, because I don't remember the Riemann C, uh, although I started from our the student or, or was postdoc. Okay. Uh, anyway, uh, they found out the DK brown state with a uh, is the mark twenty three twelve. It's amazing because uh, it's precisely the digital this S no state. Okay. And uh, so so they predict that uh, there's a bounce DK DK bound state with uh, its mass fifty seven twenty five twenty three. But unfortunately its approach doesn't work for the uh, for the nice way you are. You know, because uh, they found out the two isospin uh, resonance. The one is uh, very light, the other is uh, too heavy. Experimentally, it's uh, like a 20, 23, 18 MeV. So one is too light, one is too heavy. One is too bold, and one is too narrow. Anyway, so this approach doesn't solve the near degeneracy problem, puzzle. Okay. Now, finally, Guo uh, Hong Chen. Q uh, Meissner, they all they calculate the so-called self-energy diagram. Now, personally, I like this approach very uh, much because I don't know how to do the lattice calculation. I, I, I don't know how to do the lattice calculation as a uh, team way. But I also don't know how to do QCD sound calculation. Although my collaborator, Yang Gui Zhou, he's a QCD sound expert, okay? Uh, but uh, I never learned how to do the QCD sound calculation. So to me, the Feynman diagram is much easier because it's very simple. Everybody knows how to do the Feynman diagram calculation. Okay, in the Feynman technique, the spirit is the same. You see, you just consider some uh, intermediate state with a couple to the like a D zero K, some uh, couple channel effect. So, so it turns out that the self energy diagram mechanism can pull down the scalar maximum mass significantly, as I'm going to show. Okay. So, so in the first part of this, uh, of, uh, this work, I just uh, somehow I just uh, try to redo, recalculate uh, those uh, kind of loop calculation. Uh, it turns out our result is totally different from the uh, the uh, the uh, uh, those three gentlemen, GK, GKM. Okay. Okay. Uh, to do the calculation, of course, uh, we have the self energy diagram. Now we have to introduce self energy, okay? Now each self energy pi usually is a complex because you are now you allow scalar mass to have a decay, okay? So it's a complex. So the physical mass is defined by its one. So you consider the real part is one, okay? This is an equation for the initial condition. Now, uh, just like a standard textbook of the, on the field theory, uh, you introduce a bar bar term. You have introduced the wave, wave function normalization. So finally. The uh, decay width, decay width. If you, if the decay width is uh, narrow, uh, you can make some approximation to identify the decay width with the image part of the self energy. Okay, so this is very routine uh, in, the, in the quantum field theory. Okay. Now, the, because I'm I'm doing I'm going to do charm meson decay, B meson decay, the charm quark is heavy. Of course, bottom quark is ma much heavy, so I we can use uh, a framework which is much simple. Okay, so it's, which is even more powerful. What's called heavy quark effect theory. Okay, now if quark is on shower, if the heavy quark is uh, the moving with a velocity v, the momentum is uh, mq times v. But in reality, the the quark inside the the meson has an interaction with uh, with uh, light quarks. Normally, we call this one as a brown mark. Okay. Uh, it's those uh, light quarks, it's, a, it's, a, it's a, the surrounding stuff uh, due to the light quarks as a brown mark. Okay. Now, because of the interaction, the heavy quark actually is not the uh, on shell. It's on shell a little bit. So you introduce a so called residual moment K. Okay. 
So in the heavy core limit, the propagate for the uh, for the uh, fermion or, or for the heavy quark, actually you see eventually the M Q will swap out has nothing to do with the M Q. The in the heavy core limit the, the mass will swap out and the, the propagate is propagating to V dot K. Okay, very simple. So what, what is a heavy core if this theory? This is an N effective theory of the QCD on the heavy, on the mass of the heavy quark type of infinite. Uh, infinite and uh, with a uh, velocity in fixed. So it's a heavy quark effect theory will possess uh, the so called heavy quark spin and the flavor symmetry. Now we can see that the swamp decay, uh, because in doing the loop calculation, we have considered like a swamp decay, like a d star to d pi. Okay? Now, d star to d pi, we have a heavy quark to d star d. So you can use a heavy quark symmetry to relate to like a d star. Uh, D star to be something else, okay? But the pion is very light, uh, no, uh, very soft, because uh, the mass difference of D star D is very small. So the, the pion here is a very soft, it's not hard. So, so it's, it's very nice, because in order to describe this uh, swan decay, we can use a heavy quark symmetry, class kind of symmetry. So, so, so the, the, the so the, the appropriate approach to describe its strong decay is, is an approach in which heavy core symmetry is unified with color symmetry. Okay, so, so this is called uh, heavy meso color theory. Okay, heavy meso color theory. And then it's uh, first uh, written down by three, three papers. One is by Gong Mao Yan. Uh, usually we call this paper as a C or Y square. Okay, C is a uh, Chen, uh, Chi Chung, okay. <laughs> C, okay. Other C is me, okay. L is Ling uh, Guiyan, and then another another Ling is here. You need Ling Yizhong, okay. Uh, from Central uh, at that time he was uh, National Central University. Y is uh, Yan Dong Mao, and uh, and uh, who who's the other Y? You know, Yu Hai Li. So C or Y square. So very easy to remember our paper, the C or Y square. And this paper becomes a very classical paper because as of today, the citation almost 500, okay. And also Mark Weiss and uh, also Furman uh, Dunahill, okay. Uh, Dunahill actually is the advisor of the Yen Tong Okay. Anyway, anyway, uh, so we have uh, this uh, approach, okay. So, so uh, in the heavy cognitive effect, uh, in the heavy emotional character of the theory, uh, instead of writing this, uh, uh, form of propagate, you just uh, rewrite in terms of without k. Okay, so left hand side is uh, the propagate or, 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 or whatever in the full theory. The right hand side is uh, uh, what you have in the uh, in the Hadley uh, theory, heavy meson Hadley theory. Okay, then we we'll do the calculation. Okay, uh, first of all, we we'll consider is uh, kind of double type ones. Okay, just write down the uh, the uh, the uh, the prime loops. Okay, very simple. Okay, uh, here is a n n is the mass of the Grosso boson. Okay, and then here is a heavy quark for the for the B meson here. I just use a heavy metal type of You use a V dot V dot K or V dot Q, whatever. So the propagate of this one is a uh, is a modified by the uh, self energy type one self energy contribution here. Okay. BK means a uh, contribution from the BK on, and B, B sub S eta means uh, the contribution from the B sub S eta, okay? Uh, uh, I don't need uh, to explain those terms, okay? Anyway, for the loop integral, the loop integral here actually has been evaluated, has been calculated from time to time in the literature, okay? The first one was done by Peter Chow. In our CLY square paper, also we did something, okay? But our one is not quite complete because we made the assumption we only focus the, on linear contribution in K. Okay, so finally, Adam Falk, Ben Greenstein, uh, the other paper, the paper. Uh, but the, the final correct, complete result was written down in 1980, 1998 by Ewan Stewart. Quite late. It started from 93, but it takes a long time to get complete, correct result. Uh, finally, there's also a paper by uh, Shara in 2003. In the loop calculation, of course, you have divergence. 
you have divergence. The divergence will be absorbed by the counter terms, order by order. It's a counter term at a higher order Lagrangian terms. Okay, so the loop divergence cancel. And because of the mass here, Boltzmann mass, so you you will have a log log term, log lambda square over lambda m square. Lambda lambda is a minimization scale, which is arbitrary minimization scale. Of course, in full theory, in Kalbadeli theory, physical results should be independent of choice of the lambda. So actually, lambda will be cancelled out by the counter terms. Okay, but normally we don't know what what is uh, what the coefficient of the counter count terms. So normally, uh, in practice, normally we uh, just uh, identify lambda with uh, lambda chi. What is the lambda chi? Like lambda chi is the kind of symmetry breaking scale, which is uh, of the order of uh, GeV. Okay. So let's uh, let's uh, let's uh, let's, uh, uh, let's uh, highlight our calculation. Okay. Anyway, so let me define the mass shift. This is the bare mass and the physical mass. Okay. So I can see the the bare mass. Let me take the bare mass as the mass calculated by in the Hawke potential model. Okay. So those are uh, mass calculated in the Hawke potential model. Uh, Godfield and uh, also my Piero, like the Piero. Okay, so you see that the sub energy correction actually can push down the mass on the P sub s and also P sub s no. Okay, origin is a uh, mass like a pizza, they will push down to here. Okay, but the trouble is uh, uh, the data n, the mass shift for the DS noise is uh, overshooting. Because the uh, experimental number is uh, 2317, but the overshoot is, uh, you, you need to take 170, but you push down 250 and maybe too much. Okay. And uh, so, uh, uh, so, the, so not the, the, there are two problems. Not only the, 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 the mass of the DS node cannot be spent here, cannot be accommodated here. Also, uh, the, the, the near degeneracy cannot explain because uh, you see the mass difference is even bigger. Original like uh, 100, but here it's uh, well, also like 100. Okay, that, that doesn't work. Okay, anyway, so so our conclusion is uh, our result is sharp disagreement with the uh, uh, original paper by Guo Hong, Kun, Xu Wu, uh, Meissner. Okay, for some other reason. Okay, oh, the reason that our result is so different is because. Uh, because if you look at the original paper by by Guo, okay, they don't they their loop in, in their their loop integral formula they use x one uh, by uh, sure okay in two thousand three but actually its formula is wrong it's not correct they use uh, x one and uh, so they they claim the loop calculation will vanish in the catalyst which is not true in our calculation so I don't know why uh, they use uh, it's a gentleman's uh, loop nickel and uh, not uh, even score. Because everybody has checked the calculation. And in terms of even score, it's, uh, it's, 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 it's the correct result. Okay, anyway, so we, we, uh, we uh, change gear. Okay, so we do, let's do the calculation, do the calculation again. And then each time I will do the conventional quark model. I, want, I don't assume heavy quark or color symmetry expansion, color expansion. So I do this uh, integral same as this one, but I don't do the heavy quark expansion here. So amazingly, the calculation is much better. Uh, you see, uh, well, it lows down, but it's 130 MeV. Uh, in previous one, it's uh, like 280 MeV. Now it's uh, 100. So, so now you can and you can see that the near degeneracy of the D metal detector. Okay, so that is one. It's very close, very close. Also, the mass of the DS node now is uh, pushed down to. What's the difference between the two masses? What's the difference between the two masses? The original one, original bare mass. Oh, this is a, a bare mass due to the different gentleman. It's a calculation, it's given by the Piero, and uh, this one is uh, given by Coffee. Uh, it depends on the, your input. Mass. So I will mention it later on. So 
Uh, but there's a, there's a lot of problems uh, with uh, this approach. Uh, one is that uh, the result is sensitive to the innovation scale lambda. But I, I just mentioned before, physics should be independent of the choice of the lambda. And we don't know how to, I mean, how, how to avoid this problem. Because uh, it, it's not a full theory. We, we don't know how to, uh, this is just model, it's not a full theory. So we don't know how to take, how to take care of the, uh, the, the machine scale dependence. For example, we use, uh, when we use uh, like uh, 1.85 TV for the T, T0 and 1.93 for the D star, then we can reproduce an experimental uh, measurement. Okay, let me say one thing which is very important. Uh, I just want to understand why the mass of the DS node is uh, lighter than what you expect from the quark mass. I'll try to understand qualitatively why there's a near degeneracy. Okay. I don't want to make any quantitative prediction because it's just a lot of uncertainty. First of all, it depends on the bare masses. I mean, different people calculations for the different uh, bare masses. Okay. In fact, you can do other one from the physical mass. You can you can conversely to deduce what is the bare mass. But I will not do that. Right? There's also a contribution from other different channels. For example, you can have a, from the actual factor method here. You can also from the factor method here contribution. We never consider. But presumably, those contributions are surprised are smaller because uh, they are not close to the on shot or, or, or they are not close to the threshold. Also, depend the dependence of the Norwegian scale lambda. I, I don't know how to solve it. So, so, so far, I just uh, try to make some qualitative understanding. I don't want to make any quantitative prediction because there's so many uncertainty. So, this doesn't make sense to say I can predict what's the mass of the DS no, uh, DS no, or what's the mass of D no. Okay. So, the second part of my work is uh, look at the, uh, the dimension, dimension, the scalar mass and dimension. Because until today, uh, the scalar mass, the mass of the scalar metron, those are two states, have, been, have, have not been measured experimentally. Okay. So it's, uh, it, it's more fun, okay, it's more interesting to make some prediction. Okay. So I looked at the literature for just uh, about 20 papers. Okay, it takes time, okay, 20 papers. There's only two, three papers in which they predict near degenerates. This one, this one, and this one. And some papers like this one, well, the mass difference it, it can be even larger than 200 mV. Not only just no degeneracy, but uh, well, I don't know how to call it, okay? It's, uh, the, the, the mass difference is quite large, the two, more than 200 mV, okay? But I just mentioned before that uh, naturally you expect uh, Degeneracy you saw in the light scalar meson sector, you see the heavy meson sector, you see light degeneracy in the char meson sector. So you expect the degeneracy also will occur in the D meson sector. In fact, the, the current rubric calculation I've shown before already implies uh, this, uh, this, uh, this result. Okay. So just a three calculation. Uh, the first one is by Tae Kong Lee okay, in Korea. Okay, I think he, he has uh, visited Taiwan a couple times before. Okay, uh, but his calculation is not quite right because uh, although it's, uh, it's very close, their pre their predict his prediction for the uh, pencil one doesn't agree with his experimental number because when he made his uh, prediction uh, at that time, just still no measurement of the actual factor mass mass and also tensor uh, scale of tensor mass. Uh, there's one, another two papers in uh, 2000, two years ago by Colangelo and also by the gentleman, the Minister of Sonovich, okay? Okay, so I will mention this paper because it's, uh, this one is a basic power one, okay? Uh, <clears throat> the idea is quite simple, you just consider heavy core symmetry. Uh, in heavy core symmetry, the mass difference of the scalar meson and uh, also the shooter scalar meson, the mass difference uh, defined in terms of the uh, spin energy mass, the mass of the uh, shield scale meson, the mass of the scalar meson, the mass difference, and also the mass splitting, lambda 2, is, uh, 
in the headquarters in Japan. They are independent of the heavy coke flavor. Okay, so so it's going to be the vast difference in the B in the B sector will be same as the Chan sector, and likewise in for this one. Okay, so it depends on the uh, light coke flavor, light coke flavor like a. CQ bar is a little bit different from CS bar, and uh, it's one, number two, okay? But experimentally, uh, we have measurement in the Chan sector. So you know the right-hand side, you know the number on the right-hand side. So you just solve four equations to get the mass, okay? So finally, you get the, you predict this mass, okay? Mm. Uh, the, those are numbers I just showed on the previous slide, okay? So you see that uh, because in the Chan sector, there's a near degeneracy. So this near degeneracy will transform also into the B-meson sector. So the near degeneracy observed in the Chan sector will also imply the same thing in the scalar meson sector. So you see the, uh, the mass is almost of course. Okay, uh, you may ask why is uh, the air bar is so large here by very small here. The reason is uh, in the Chan sector, the, the D0, D0 star, it became with you because it's very broad. So experimentally, it's very, very difficult to identify. So the error bar of the mass is very large. So it's, uh, it's, it's, it's a large error bar just uh, reflects that uh, the experimental difficulty to identify the scale of the decay width of the nice strange scalar meson. Okay. Now, this is true in the heavy quality. So you have needed to consider the uh, how much time Okay, finish. No problem. Okay. So now we have to consider some uh, correction. Because uh, we just, just mentioned the heavy core limit. Okay. Now beyond the heavy core limit, you consider some uh, QCD correction, the one way correction. Okay. The uh, QCD the uh, QG correction is uh, is, is one. Okay. Uh, it turns out the uh, the QG correction, the QG correction, the the QG correction here is very important because uh, it's number. It's a point A2, and this experimental number, there is, there is a ratio for the point A9. So it means that it's uh, uh, many governed by the uh, QG correction. There's also one way in correction. Okay, so in heavy quark GP theory, just write down the, uh, the heavy meson, the mass of the heavy hadron in terms of quark mass. But this one is uh, the uh, effect energy of the light quark, effect energy of the, of the uh, heavy quark. This is a common magnetic induction. Okay. So anyway, the uh, in heavy core limit, this one is equal to one. Okay. So uh, this is a one way correction. Okay. And so I just write down this uh, correction the delta term. And uh, so we have calculated the, the estimate the delta is correction one way correction. It's about minus thirty five anyway. I will not go to detail. Okay. So anyway, uh, so our final prediction is uh, the mass of the NGO spa is like uh, 57, 15 and we plus uh, some large air bar, small air bar here, with uh, some one-way correction. It's a one-way correction, it uh, has to be negative, okay? But unfortunately, I cannot say precisely how big it is, but the uh, estimate is like minus 35, anyway. But anyway, no matter you consider the QCD correction or one-way correction, it will not spoil the near degenerates. Okay. Now, now let's go to the term of the uh, experimental people. Why? Uh, why until today we haven't seen the BS uh, one and the BS one? Okay. Uh, because the uh, BS one is uh, below the BK threshold. Uh, uh, actually, it should be B sub S K or B sub S K threshold. Okay. And so the the uh, no 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 BK is correct. So the only swan decay you have is a B sub a B sub is a pine on and which violates uh as a spin thing too. Okay. And so the you expect that the B S no or B S D no is uh, a very narrow. Okay. Now you may ask why you why uh Baba saw the uh this uh, resonance for the charm, but the, not for the bottom meson. And the reason I think is uh, because uh, uh, for B sub S, uh, 